Hello farmers and welcome to the harvest season. My name is Al. And my name is Bev. And we're here today to talk about farming games. Woo! Um, although there is no farming in the main topic. Mm. Like at all. They don't even it's not even a pretense of farming. There's no, no farming. No. I mean it's the same universe as the original two farming games. <laughs> yes, so we are going to talk about <laughs> Stories of Mara, chapter one. Um, so this is the visual novel um of some stories that happen in Mara after the uh after the story of summer in Mara. Um, mm-hmm. there are i think it's five chapters overall and I they've just so. released they've just released the first one mm-hmm. so i got bev on the episode to talk about it yeah it seems um, like i am the the chibig <laughs> you are <laughs> there's nothing wrong now. with that the no, the, the correspondent the chibig correspondent uh-huh <laughs> Yes, I, I'll I'll accept this as the title. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, everybody has a thing. So yours is Chibi. Um, uh-huh. Kevin's is Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Micah's is Story of Seasons. Mm-hmm. And sorry, Cody. Cody's is mobile games, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh-huh. Also bees. And bees, of course. Also bees. Never forget about the bees. Well, and there are bee games upcoming, which we're going to talk about. So, Ooh. you know, you need to have a bee correspondent. You do. <laughs> uh, before that, we will talk about some news. Mm-hmm. And before that, I'm going to ask Bev, what have you been playing? I have been playing a lot of Fire Emblem Three Houses in Animal Crossing as of late. So I think the last time okay. I was on, I was doing a lot of juggling. So I've, I've done less of that now. <laughs> Animal Crossing. Uh huh. I restarted my island. Uh, oh no! A few months ago. Uh, partly because I just I wanted a name change and I couldn't do that without uh, without yeah. actually starting it over. And hindsight, I probably what I probably should have done is just like migrate it over to my Switch Lite and then yeah. slowly move everything over as I want them. But instead, I just hoarded stuff on a, a friend's <laughs> island and then brought it over later. <laughs> That sounds like the most boring gameplay for Animal Crossing. Just it, <laughs> moving it, thousands of items. Yeah. I mean, I did. It wasn't It wasn't a lot. I kept one of each flower that I had. And <laughs> uh, I saved as much money as I could. And uh, I think, what else? And all the mom's items, because I wanted to make of sure course. I kept those. Because those, those were a little harder to get. And and the models. Uh, so CJ's and uh, Flex models. Yeah. And the i i put them on like my partner's like island so like really it, it was very easy to go and get them back uh you you say cj and flick models you know flick makes all the models cj doesn't <gasps> that's right oh my goodness i'm so sorry flick my apologies <laughs> <laughs> cj just gets flick to make them <laughs> uh-huh i forget but like flick is just so excited about bugs so yeah. it's like I, I guess i could see how you would also do fish and just not be as excited about it well i mean you know a commission's a commission right mm-hmm. like sure. you know the 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 bugs is uh out of passion and the fish is out of well helping your partner and also mm-hmm. a little bit of money or True. do you pay for them with fish <laughs> and bugs does that count uh, I, well, I mean yes it counts <laughs> i guess uh-huh you know so in maybe maybe CJ gets the fish and then pays Flick for the model and then Somehow. Flick gets the bugs for the model and sells the bugs. I suppose so. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I would maybe think part of the payment is the enjoyment of collecting more of what you love. I guess with those yeah, those two specifically. Yeah. Because everyone maybe. else, it's a tr- money transaction that you do, like uh, yeah, with kicks and and uh. It's, the sloth. What's his, uh? What, what, oh, what um, is oh, uh, uh, I the love him. Star. Leaf, leaf, leaf. There we go. Yes. yes, like everyone else deals with money. So why, why those two? They, they're also the only ones that give you competitions. So it's like, yeah, are you kind of catching them for them? Because if you don't want them, they keep them. <laughs> they must have anyway. some sort of like black market where they're just so selling all been, these bugs. So you've been playing some Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
Uh-huh. Good. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm glad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so has there been anything in that you've just been playing update wise or is it just like I just want to go through all this again? Uh, go through all this again because uh, w- in my previous save file I left I fell off a little like over the summer in the fall. Uh, yeah. So getting to to play during the times that I haven't really been active. Oh, it's yeah, been, yeah. It's kind of fun to see it, different things uh, more often, I suppose. And I'm just trying to develop a habit so it's just like a little bit every day so I can eventually collect everything that I want. But I, I would say I've been spending most of my time with Fire Emblem trying to get through. Uh, I already finished one playthrough of that, so I'm on my second playthrough of, of it with a different house. Are you going to do all three houses? I'm the plan is to do all three and then another so the the one of the houses has two different paths that you can take so it's technically technically four different playthroughs you can have in order to uh, f- wow. get the full experience I suppose. <laughs> uh-huh. I have never played any Fire Emblem. Well, like so it's I I have found that it's different it's different enough with a different house that it's still interesting. Because you you're right. getting to know a whole different group of people, a, a whole group of new characters, and like sure the main plot points are the same, but like the way that they react to it is slightly different. Um, so it's not like going through Pokemon with a new starter. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. It's definitely different enough, and I know enough from the first playthrough that I can try to go through it a little faster this time. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it would be fun if things changed based on your starter in a book. It would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like conditional. Uh, well, I, I suppose they tried to do that a little bit with the last one with giving you a, a different gym leader and a different game. Yeah, but, but that wasn't so based on what you... That was just based on no, which game, wasn't it? It was, but it, it's it's not too far off, I suppose. But even then, yeah. like one, two... Was it two different... Uh, gym leaders it's not a whole lot different yeah yeah i think that was all mm-hmm. yeah i never actually finished my my shield playthrough I, I did everything on sword like i've done all the dlc and everything as well mm-hmm. um but i never I did have ever finish my shield. <laughs> i will have to go back and do both at some point i'm at the DLC two months sword. oh goodness no that's gonna have to wait, <laughs> that's gonna have to wait. <laughs> which reminds me i need a pre-order for that yeah, that. I did that as soon as I found one shop that was doing it for like, so I think it's, was it 120 for mm-hmm. the two games as RRP? Yep. I, there was a shop selling them for £82 pounds for the double pack. Oh, wow. That's good. So I jumped on that as soon as I saw that. Yeah, I wish I would have found something similar. Oh, well. Yeah. I mean, they don't tend to actually sell them for 60 here. Um that is their RRP, but most places tend to go for about fifty. Um, but okay. still, I mean, eighty-two for the two is is very good. It um, is, yeah. Jealous. <laughs> so first time I bought a double pack of Pokemon games. Normally, what I do is I buy one and then buy another one a few months later. But this deal was too good not to go for. It. I I normally buy them together, uh, but I think this year I will be buying them separately because I'm I'm not gonna get to the second one anyway for probably a couple months and i'm trying to be better with budgeting (laughs) yeah fair fair i i just want to have my collection complete still (laughs) i will have it complete it has to be complete well yeah but eventually (laughs) like on day one i'll have my collection back up it is very satisfying to have it on day one i i will be sad not to do it this time but i'll get there yeah i think Part of my problem is that if I go to play the second game, if I don't do it straight away, I hard, I never finish it. So I need to actually mm. get through it, like just before I start playing something else. But mm. we'll have to see what happens. I've got, yeah. I'm trying to figure out what's happening with the podcast around that because I think we're meant to be record. There's meant to be a podcast recording the day after the games come out. I'm oh goodness. not doing that, so I'm definitely going <laughs> to need to change that. Uh huh. Uh-huh. It's like here's a podcast episode, which is just me talking while playing the game yeah. for an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> live, we'll live, see. Live play. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh-huh. Welcome to a farming game podcast where I am playing Pokemon as we speak. <laughs> mm-hmm. I suppose you could do uh, if you wanted to do something different. You could do like a live uh, Twitch stream and then eventually turn that into uh, a podcast. I, I, I mean. I've done some Twitch streaming um, with 
Stardew and mm -hmm. Harvest Moon One World. Mm -hmm. But I just, I don't think it's for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, maybe if I got hundreds of people watching, I might. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's rough starting out. I, I, I It is. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it when I did it and I would like to go back into it. But as it is now, I spend way too much time at my desk. And, it, and my desk is now where I work full time and... This will yeah. also be where I stream. Yeah. And, and the it's problem just... is it's it's such a big time commitment because yeah. um, you have to do it regularly and frequently. Mm -hmm. And so like doing it once every two weeks is not enough, which is what I do for no. the podcast. So mm -hmm. it'd have to be like at least a couple of times a week and at least for a few hours. And that's, well, that's a big time commitment. That's only if you're trying to get consistent followers. Which is what I would do. <laughs> Yes, I suppose so. I would, I think, want to do it more so so it feels like I'm playing with someone else as opposed to just playing by myself. But I guess you, you do need follow followers to do that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I have been playing, I obviously played Stories of Mara. Mm -hmm. I played a little bit of Garden Story. Ooh. And I have been doing a lot of shiny hunting in Pokemon. Ooh. What are you so, uh, currently shiny hunting? I'm currently shiny hunting uh, Galarian Mr. Mine. Oh, good. So I'm go I'm going through my list of Galarians. So I did finished off. I got one Ponyta in Pokemon Go a few months ago. So I got my second one. Um, I got my second one yesterday, and then I got a uh, far fetched like a couple of hours later. It mm. was incredible timing. Very lucky. And then yeah, got my second far fetched, and so now I'm on to Mr. Mine. Good. Um, I. I have not completed my Pokedex, so I, I need to do that. I've been slowly doing it very, very, very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's that's about what we've been playing then. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some news. The first bit of news, uh, very appropriate for this episode, <laughs> is that Ancora Lost Days is now on Kickstarter. So this is the new game from Chibi, mm -hmm. um, the makers of Summer and Mara and Dayland and Stories and Mara. Yep. Uh, Bev, have you backed it yet? I did. I think as soon as I heard that they were doing it, I did like the early bird. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I at this point, I feel like I just need to commit full in full into anything that's within this <laughs> universe. Yeah. You know you're going to buy it anyway, so get it cheap as soon as yep. they announce it. Yep, exactly. Yep. It's uh, 20 euros or what is that, $25? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. for for the the cheapest and that's just the digital version yeah um and there's like a special physical uh collector's edition which gives you like all of the games and all of the stuff that they could think of if you want something like that um mm -hmm. well there's also just like i think a regular based uh like yeah i know i was just giving the yeah, I was just mm. giving the kind of the the extremes there. There's lots mm. of kind of, there's a few in between these. But. Which I, I I normally prefer to get physical, but I just couldn't I couldn't justify it currently because it's like double the price for the physical. Sadly. Yeah, I'm funny. I quite I quite like having digital, um, especially for an indie game. I don't know why. I can't explain it, but I see the appeal of it, and and indie games tend to be smaller, so it's not it's not really going to take up a lot of space, and it's not going to take up too much time to like move it around well, if you need to. The, the space is not an issue. I have a half a terabyte SD card in my Switch. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that will that will that will be good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it doesn't tend to be an issue. Um, uh -huh. SD cards are so cheap now. True. Uh, I will say I'm excited about this. Uh, interested to see what they do with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking really interesting. So we've got a bit more kind of um, screenshots and small amounts of gameplay uh, animation um, mm -hmm. and lots of information about the story. So it's very much on the uh, survival aspect of things rather than farming, um, which is mm -hmm. fine. We knew that we knew that coming in, um, but it looks really good. Um, mm -hmm. And I like the the different kind of movement style. Um, it's kind of similar-ish to Dayland in its here's a little world, uh, although in this case it's just a part of a world, um, mm -hmm. and you're kind of walking around it, uh, but possibly less going to make me feel ill because it's not on a sphere, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. It definitely does have that same feel and like the same mm. I think like color like palette as Dayland, which is mm. makes me a little sad because I love how bright and colorful. Uh, Mara is, but 
yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what what's what what they do with it. Uh, they are like advertising like tier forming and kind of like the island like hopping that Animal, Animal Crossing kind of has. So I'm interested yeah. to see what what they do with that. Um, yeah, I think I wouldn't be too sad about it being more similar to Dalen than Summer and Mara because I feel like the kind of kind of having kind of two tracks of games and mm-hmm. this is more like the Dayland one but we know there's another game they have planned and i suspect that's more like summer in mara with your kind of th- more 3d um mm-hmm. not first person but like much more of a kind of movable camera where you're running around a world and mm-hmm. probably much more bright sort of world than than this i suspect uh Maybe I'm reading too much into things, but that's that's what I'm expecting at this yeah, point. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And, like, I, I don't know if I noticed this before, but I, I I don't know if they were advertising themselves as, like, this before, but they're creating a universe, and that's kind of what Chibig is, I think, focusing on now. So I, I don't yeah. think they're moving away from Mara or Encore or Dylan anytime soon, which is, like, an interesting route to take, but makes sense since they've done well, I think, for them. Yeah, time. yeah, exactly. I like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah, so we'll we'll see what see what happens. Um, there definitely is a little bit of farming. I can see one of the screenshots uh, with um, Mun being around some plants, look mm-hmm. like tomato plants. Um, and I think there's cooking in it, possibly. Um, but yeah, no, it looks. I'm excited. The estimated delivery date uh, is July 2022 mm-hmm. for the game. Um, so I expect we'll get it january 2023 um <laughs> <laughs> as uh, as things go uh yep um sorry i'm i'm pessimistic about these things i just like to get my expectations there um they've already hit one of their stretch goals um and their the next stretch goal is called surprise events and this looks interesting because this is bringing in a, a lot more choice to it where there's some random events that happen and they could either be good or bad and so you can choose to either do it or not. And it will, if you do it, it will either give you something good or bad. Um, so I suspect I'll spend most of my time saying no to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just because I am a wimp. But oh. I like the addition. And that'll be quite cool. Yeah, I, I think it'd be interesting to see how they, what they do with it. Yeah, cool. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. And it's like fun to see a couple of familiar faces too. Now that we've spent un- enough time in this world to, to get... Actually care about people. Them yeah yeah definitely def um and obviously there's an aspect of that which ties into the fact that we've just played stories of mara and getting reminded mm-hmm. about the characters and the stories um mm-hmm. which i'm sure we'll talk about later on in the episode <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> um next we have a few bits of information about story of seasons pioneers of olive town first of all first of all it is coming to steam on the 15th of september um so that's cool. If you wanted to play it on your PC, mm-hmm. you can do that. There's also a new blog post from the localization team about localizing the um, most recent DLC and update. Um, so if you're interested in that, there'll be a link to that in the show notes. Um, I don't think there's anything groundbreaking or shocking in that. It's just always interesting to read about how they, um, you know, their challenges and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. This is not a game that I've played yet, but it's it's still on my like to want to play list. I am shocked and appalled. <laughs> I know. This, this is, is definitely the one to play if you haven't. Uh, okay, good. Very good game. Well, Did you listen to have... me and Micah's episode on it? Uh no, because I think I wanted to wait. I think closer to when I was ready to buy it. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I do have Dorymon. Uh, oh, okay. but I feel like I should finish that before I move on to another one. It's also a good game, but mm-hmm. uh, less of a traditional Story of Seasons game. It's, it's very different in many ways, mm-hmm. um, which is good. I thought it was very fun with the differences. Yeah, okay. Um, but it doesn't give you a true view of what a Story of Seasons game is normally. It doesn't, but it's still, I like, I, I mind you, I haven't put too many hours into it, and I think I fell off for it a few months now. Uh, but I, I did enjoy it when I was playing it, and I'm looking forward to, I think, devoting more of my attention to it when I'm ready to go back into it. Yeah, it's definitely fun. Mm-hmm. Um, th- there's also a new costume for Story of Seasons uh, launching on the 15th of September, and you can get it until the 30th of March next year. And that is a costume for Sakuna, um, which was 
the game we were talking about last episode, me and Kevin. Mm-hmm. I think that was the last one, wasn't it? Mm, yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> so you can get a costume that is inspired by Sakuna. Um, it's quite a cool looking costume. Um, Very good. Yeah. And finally, Xbox and PlayStation versions of the games are releasing on the 26th of October in North America and on the 15th of October in Europe. So I think that's it on everything now. (laughs) Very good. Go get your games. Uh, Next, we have the Beverly update for Spiritfarer is out now. Um, So I think there's only one more update to come Mm -hmm. that we know of at this point. Um, So... Yeah, if you're looking to play that, then go for that. Personally, I will be waiting till the final update is out before I play through it again. Same. So I started it, I think, a few months ago, then realized, like, oh, there's a whole bunch of updates that are coming with quality of life improvements and new content and whatnot. So I figured I've only put in a few hours in this. Now let me put it down (laughs) so I can just (laughs) play it when it's all fully out. (laughs) But it's, it's a beautiful game i i listened to like you and kelly talk about it and just immediately wanted it yeah it's a very good game mm-hmm. good game. uh we've also got information that bear and breakfast um has been delayed until next year um which has been met with resounding support uh obviously it's very sad when a game gets delayed because we're not going to play it till later and have to you know change podcast plans mm-hmm. um <laughs> But uh, yeah, looking forward to when that gets released next year. Hopefully it will just be even better coming out a year Hopefully. later. Or not I, a year I, later, months I'm later. glad that I think a lot of people are moving towards like, we, we would rather wait for a better game than yes. force you to push something out that's like not finished. Yes. So I, I'm glad that people are coming around to that uh, mentality. Yeah, although I think I think that Bear and Breakfast did the good thing of not giving a date they gave a vague time frame i think they wanted to be mm-hmm. the end the, like the end of 2021 um uh so like i i always think that people shouldn't actually give a, a release date until um they can be certain that that is when it's gonna yeah uh, yeah so and we've got some harvest moon one world news there's been a new update um if you're still playing that game <laughs> there you go uh, so first of all, the if you're getting seeds from the harvest sprites, you'll get more seeds from them rather than just one, which is a good update. There are more teleport points, which is also a good update. The seeds buying in shops, this was one of the big problems I had with the game, is it cost 500 Gs for any seeds, mm. even if they only sold for 100 G, oh, um, wow. which is dreadful. They yeah. now only cost 50G, so it can actually be very profitable to buy and sell, uh, the, to buy the seeds and then grow the plants and sell them. Um, Good. They, they did, they, um, they haven't changed anything else around that. You still need to ship a certain number of the crop before you can get them but in the shop. Um, but actually, I think that works quite well based on the concept of the game. Um, you know, I think that was actually fine. You have to get a certain number of them and sell them before you can actually buy them in the shop based on how they were selling the game i think works fine but 50g is a much more sensible amount than 500 mm-hmm. yeah sounds like it uh although it doesn't make me gonna make the pick up the game again <laughs> and finally um you can now bin things from your bag huzzah previously <laughs> if you filled up your bag you would have to go back to your house to empty stuff um and sell stuff now if you, there's stuff you have you don't want you can just bin it this is good that's definitely a huge life improvement i feel like quality of these life. are all very good updates thank you mm-hmm. very much natsumi um we have news that staxel is finally coming to nintendo switch um it is releasing on the 23rd of september on switch um so this is the kind of uh minecraft style graphics mm-hmm. farming game um which we've been talking about occasionally on the podcast. I still haven't played this because I was waiting for it to come to Switch. Mm-hmm. So I uh, guess I've got to put my money where my mouth is. I do not know if I will play it, but it looks, I don't know. Like I'm not a huge fan of the Minecraft like art style, but I see the appeal of it as well. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Not mm-hmm. everyone likes it, but uh, 
I, I like the look of it. It's really funny. I don't know whether they thought they were being clever or not. <laughs> Their first tweet about it was um, uh, cooking up a sweet announcement for later this week um, with a little kind of uh, graphic of them cooking in the game. But on <laughs> the word sweet, the S and W were capitals. Um, and at one point in the oh. image, there's like blue and red uh, in one of the pots. And so I was like, oh, okay, it's coming to Switch. Um, <laughs> and then they went like, ev- every day they, they then had one letter from the name. And I was like, come on, we know it's Switch, right? <laughs> so uh-huh. It's like, it's really obvious we know it's Switch. Uh-huh. But <laughs> it was cute. cute, I guess. Uh-huh. But there we are. Uh, the My Time at Porsche update is finally out on consoles and Epic and GOG. So if you were waiting for that, there that that is there mm-hmm. that's also another game that i need to go back and finish <laughs> no you don't you don't need to <laughs> i i i want to i want i want at least that's fine if you want to that's fine but you definitely don't need to <laughs> especially not for that game very true uh look if people enjoy that game i'm very happy for you mm-hmm. i'm very happy for you <laughs> <laughs> um we have a couple of stardew valley related things first of all the um there is not a new update in the works for Stardew Valley for the first time in years. Shock horror. Um, I'm actually happy about this. Like, obviously, I wouldn't complain about there being more content in Stardew Valley. Mm-hmm. But I also think it's important that um, that Concerned Ape, the uh, creator of Stardew Valley, gets to do what he wants to do and yeah. doesn't feel like he needs to keep doing Stardew stuff just to keep people happy. Um, there's, there's already so much content on there. Like So I, much I haven't even gone to any of the new stuff, I think, since the third update. Like, the addition of the yeah. whole new area to explore and do things. So it's just... Yeah, I don't blame Concerned Ape for wanting to try new things. And and I also want to see... Uh, uh, goodness, what's the publisher? Uh, I'm forgetting the name of the publisher. Uh, I mean, you're probably thinking Chucklefish, but they don't publish yes. it anymore. Uh, okay. That stopped Fair last point. year. Uh, Concerned point. Date Chuck publishes it all himself. Okay, I missed that. <laughs> or I knew that and then I forgot. <laughs> you probably did know it because it's been mentioned on this podcast before. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so I definitely listen, forgot about so. that. But I, I uh. want to see Butchbrook, which seems very Stardew-esque, but for a different like realm. So this is not this is not related anymore. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> um, I also don't think we've done a Stardew Valley 1.5 update yet this year uh, so I need to do that at some point mm-hmm. shocking um, it is, I mean beaches the other Stardew Valley information is that, oh well, I missed out uh, the reason the Concerned Ape is not working on a Stardew update is because he's working on the next game which is not farming game related but based in the Stardew Valley so that is being worked on uh, there you go. We don't know much about it. Mm-mm. But I'm still excited. Yes, yes. Um, and the Stardew Valley Cup happened um, two weeks, last, last, last week, um, some, some time, um, and a team won it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I would hope that a team won from a tournament cup. At least I one have team. Not, I, I have not watched it yet. Uh-uh. Um, but I plan to watch it. It's four hours long, the stream, um, and it's is an, a link to watch it on demand in the show notes. Mm-hmm. I will probably watch it at some point because I'm just interested. I, I mean, I love the game yeah. enough to that I and I mean, I've watched enough Twitch streamers play it, so it's not any different from that. Except now that it's competitive. <laughs> Yeah, and I think at four hours long, it's the sort of length where you're like, it's not too long. And Mm -hmm. you're just like, oh, yeah, we could could watch that and just be like, you know, four hour sessions or something. Yeah. Um, Which doesn't sound like a ridiculous amount. It's not. And I've definitely been streaming stuff in the background during work lately. So it's definitely something I think I could easily put on in the back and just kind of ignore until it's interesting (laughs) enough for me to pay attention to. Yeah. I think it is. In, I've seen a, a few clips from it. It's interesting to see some of the tactics because obviously it was a uh, it was four person teams, and mm-hmm. so they could do lots of really interesting things. You know, they kind of get down to the bottom of the mines like incredibly quickly, 
um, like basically in 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 a day, the four of them get down there. Okay. Oh, um, and and then they go and make a whole bunch of stair. Well, they didn't go out. They go down to like level seventy, and then they go make a whole bunch of staircases from all the stone they got, and then use that to get the rest of the way down, and then just go to Stul- Skull Cave because that's where you make the money. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's it's fascinating just watching these things. So yeah, I may to watch it just for like tips and tricks. I yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I fail Skull Cavern. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Skull Cavern is terrifying. Uh huh. Although this last playthrough that I've been doing, uh, I've been doing much better in Skull Caverns. I've somehow mastered some of my fears down there, I guess. Nice. <laughs> Good job. Mm-hmm. That's all of the news. So we're now going to talk about Stories of Mara, uh, Chapter 1. Um, now, presumably, um, this will be most heavily uh, mechanics if we talk about the other chapters in the future, they will be less about the mechanics because presumably they're not going to change because it looks like... So I, I thought that they were going to be separate games, the chapters, but it actually is the same game. Like what you download from Steam is Stories of Mara, not Stories of Mara Chapter 1. It's just that the game currently only has Chapter 1 in it. Mm-hmm. That's what it seems to be. Oh, I Had you not don't noticed think that? I noticed that different. No, but it makes sense. So, um, obviously, we mentioned that this is a visual novel, um, mm-hmm. and I think we've mentioned before, but you're playing as Akaji, um, who is the mm-hmm. blacksmith in Summer in Mara. At, at least in chapter one, uh, from the True. the loading screen, it seems like there might be different perspectives uh, yes. that you're playing with in future chapters. That is true. So, for chapter one, mm-hmm. we're playing as Akaji, the blacksmith. Um, mm-hmm. So... It, the kind of mechanics are obviously pretty simple because it is a visual novel. Um, I haven't played many visual novels before, so I don't know how similar it is to others. But basically you have a map with a bunch of different locations around the main island in Summer in Mara. Um, and you kind of, you start off in a specific location and then you have to go to other specific locations to continue the story, either side quests or the main story. Um mm-hmm. And then, yeah, you just have to kind of, there's a bunch of fetch quests and stuff like that. And you just sometimes, it's not exactly difficult. It's just that, you know, at some points mm-hmm. it'll be like, oh, you know, I'm looking for this person. Where could they be? And you have to think about where they might be on the map, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I do wish they would have kept some of the mechanics of the previous, like, two games where they would have, like, a list of quest logs. Because that would yeah. have been handy, given, like, they're surprisingly there is a lot of content i think in terms of the, just looking at it only chapter one uh well at least i thought it was considering it's a visual yeah novel, which i'm also not terribly f- familiar with yeah so i guess the thing is that obviously this was meant to be like kind of a small thing project that they're doing between mm-hmm. games so I, I totally get that it's kind of mm-hmm. simple um but yeah a, a list of uh, uh, things that you have to do at least kind of um as you uncover them would be nice um mm-hmm. however i think on that I, w- I wasn't really planning on talking about this this early but um we're at it now um also i think that it, it's not very linear and that's fine um mm-hmm. there are it's mostly linear but apparently there are some aspects of it you can miss entirely mm-hmm. and once you finish the main storyline f- of this chapter um it goes okay that's fine you finished uh next chapter will be up soon if you want to play again you need to wipe your save file and you're like yeah. that's all then you can do nothing there's nothing you can do in the game if you don't wipe your save file um yeah. and that's fine like i kind of wish they would have had multiple save files so i could keep my previous one and and, and go and try again yeah. but my main issue with that is there is an achievement um so they have an achievement for each section of the main story um and mm-hmm. on on the steam achievements there's one non-hidden one that i don't have that is was it chapter six i think Mm -hmm. let me just check my list of achievements um which is very definitely meant to be part of the main storyline it sounds like it because it is specifically a numbered part a numbered section um i don't know Mm -hmm. how i missed it (laughs) so it's possible to miss that and still finish the game so if i want to get that bit of the story i'll need to wipe my save file and that doesn't feel great to me. It it doesn't, considering uh, like it does take a while to 
to get through this storyline. Uh, like, I, I know there's a couple... I don't know if... I, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. Uh, but there are a couple of different paths you can take. I mean, there's not, nothing major. Yeah. Uh, but th- Yeah, you have choices in the game. But, so, like, having to start all over from the beginning and not be able to, like, skip to a part that you've already experienced or yeah, I mean, I want think, to experience again. I think I'm okay with that for, like, all of the, the choices, right? I think I'm okay with, like, if they had a way to, like, start a new save file rather than wipe your old one. And so you could try mm-hmm. the different choices you didn't do and you'd have to go from the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's fine. My issue is this one is specifically called Act 6. I have Act 1 through 5 and Act 6, 7 and 8. How did mm-hmm. I? How am I not able to go into the game and see Act Six? I just I don't know how I missed that, and, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know why I can't I, I see also it. I don't know how, <laughs> uh-huh. or how you were able to skip it, like because it, it I would imagine that it is indeed a plot. Yeah, line I'm intrigued. I'll need to try it again. But uh-huh. I was doing this really quickly last night because I realized I hadn't finished. This was not planned for this mm-hmm. week. This episode. This was planned for next episode. So I thought I had more time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not blaming. <laughs> I'm not blaming. I'm just saying. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I, I haven't had time to go and see what I did that changed that. And I'm intrigued as to mm-hmm. what the story points are that I've missed. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not so bothered about all the the kind of other achievements. There's seven hidden achievements um, that I mm-hmm. don't have, which is fine because they're kind of like probably side things. It's the fact that this one is core story which feels really weird Mm -hmm. it does yeah that that is that is odd uh i am a bit of completionist so i do i think want to eventually get all the hidden ones oh yeah 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 of course i know as of i think august 31st uh someone posted on like the steam community that one of them is just it's i think a bug you can't get it okay Uh, so that's kind of frustrating so if you if you are trying to complete it before the next chapter comes out or the rest of the game comes out then be mindful that they may have to do an, an update before yeah. trying to get all the chapter one uh, achievements. Fair enough. Um, mm-hmm. As as a as a side note, I uh, I really want achievements on Switch now. <laughs> I do. They're strangely satisfying. Like yeah. uh, like I I've, I see them on other games. Like PS PS uh, PlayStation has them. Uh, Steam obviously has them. Uh, I can't think of any other. I don't, I'm sure Xbox probably has some, but they they are kind of satisfying and kind of a an incentive to going back and playing the game if you feel like you want to 100 percent it or yeah get get a little bit of direction. It's better I think when they're not hidden because then you actually know what to kind of look for. Uh, but I I knowing that there are these achievements, I do want to go back and try to get them with the rest of this chapter, but I. I, I I know I get a little frustrated because I I pick the wrong choice in some of these lines and then I think that I kind of messed up that one run so I would have to wipe over and start over. Yeah, it's just, so it's it's a in, little frustrating. It's interesting, right? Because there's there's a lot of choice in. Um, we are going to have a section where we talk about the story and we'll spoil things then. But I'm trying not to do mm-hmm. that just now. But there's there's like you basically get to choose uh, small things about things you're giving to people basically um and mm-hmm. i think it's interesting because there is the ideal one which you do and you get all the achievements if you do the ideal things um mm-hmm. but the if you don't do that you still get to the end of the story right you still manage mm-hmm. to complete it it's just that people aren't as happy as they might be um if you gave them mm-hmm. the right thing um but it's still good enough mm-hmm. yes and it it it's nice to see that choices do matter like in some definitely in some cases they don't uh but it 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 is nice to see that a a a choice can put you down a slightly different path that will either result in like something slightly different happening in the scene or result in you not seeing any of the cut like like a whole part of the story yeah too which is i think interesting yeah yeah um is there anything else mechanics wise we want to talk about? Obviously, it's not going to be heavily mechanics because it's a very simple game. But is there anything else we want to talk about with that? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, cool. Well, in that case, we are now going to talk about the story. Um, 
it's not a very long story because it's only part one of five. Mm-hmm. But obviously there are some uh, large plot points that would spoil, could spoil the game if you plan to play it and you haven't done that. If that mm-hmm. is you, I would recommend pausing this episode now and going to play it. Um, it was only a few hours long, so it wasn't like a very long game. You can probably get it done in a, in an evening if you mm-hmm. try. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, if you don't care, then that's fine. Continue on. But this is your mm-hmm. warning that you will have the story almost entirely told to you because it's not very long. Mm-hmm. Is that fair? I don't know if we've mentioned... I, I think that's completely fair. And I don't know if we've actually mentioned this yet, but the chapter one is free. Uh, so I... If you're at all interested in this game, I would definitely pause. And uh, if you're interested, in, if you d- don't care about spoilers, continue listening. But uh, go out, go out and try it out for yourself. Yeah. So that's <laughs> actually, I, I guess that's one other thing that we should talk about. It's interesting because they they did they did word it like chapter one is free and the future ones are not going to be. But I suspect the whole thing's going to be free because, like, can you do? I mean, you guess you could do DLC for this, right? And charge for the DLC. <laughs> Or you could, can you charge for a game that's previously free? Could they change the price? I don't know. Um, I don't know, because there's no way to, like, add it to your cart. So I was surprised yeah. that you couldn't do that. So I guess it, it depends on how they release it. It could be that uh, this is, like, a demo, and then they'll re- re- re-release a whole well, new version of it later. I would have thought but, that, but uh, the name of it in Steam is Stories of Mara. It's not... Mm-hmm. There is, it's not Stories of Mara Chapter 1 or Stories of Mara Demo or anything. It's just Stories of Mara. I don't know why they would have called it that if they were then going to have another one later on. True. I don't know. I, well, I we'll, guess, we'll see I what happens. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is your spoiler warning. We are going to talk about the story. Warning. Warning. Um, right. So... <laughs> I don't think I want to just talk through the entire story, right? But we can kind of go through it slowly. So I, I was a little bit confused at the very beginning because I think it starts out as you are from Koa's point of view talking yeah. to Napopo. And I think based mm-hmm. on what is happening, clearly something has happened at this point, but it wasn't very clear at this point. No. Um, and then you jump to being Akaji and um, there's kind of some boring stuff happening about you know, uh, Akaji is obviously fixing a bunch of things for people, but then mm-hmm. it's called down to the beach and there's a stranded boat and it's Koa's boat and no one knows about where Koa is and that's kind of the main plot point of this is Koa has gone missing and yeah. they need to find out why. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's I think, kind of cute in that in that moment, they, like all these characters that you've come to to know and love in Summer Mara, they all kind of realize like, oh, we don't actually know a lot about Ko. Like, where yeah. she lives. Yeah, that was really funny. They were like, does she not live on the island? No, no, she doesn't. Uh-huh. We don't know where she, she just appears up. He appears randomly, which is quite fun. Uh-huh. And um, uh-huh. I think and then, someone like, had mentioned that uh, Koa had said that she lives on a specific island in a specific place and it's not on any map. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so but very, very sus, I guess. <laughs> like, does this place actually exist? Well, I think the thing is, I, I, I think it's one of those, so the the, the Guardians had a, 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 th- a shrine there, right? And a bunch of uh-huh. mysterious stuff around them on, the, on that island. I suspect it's just like Koa and before Koa, her grandmother, where the guard, the, the guardian of the Guardians, if you will, like the, the caretaker of that island that is essentially um oh what's the word i'm looking for um special uh to the guardians Mm -hmm. and so is a very important place so it's not easy to you can't just find it um you have to know where it is and you have to go Mm -hmm. it's probably something like you have to like go with the right kind of um feelings in your heart to be able to find it you know you're kind of typical like you have to be a good person sort of thing to find Mm, typical like magical journey exactly yeah 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 so i suspect it's just not on any map because nobody's ever found it i i kind of like the uh, another uh take on this and that uh haku which is koa's grandmother Ah, kind of bribed like the, the map makers to just leave it off. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a very different viewpoint <laughs> uh-huh 
like either threaten the map makers or like <laughs> bribe them to like you better leave this off your map <laughs> oh dear yeah no it'll be interesting it'll be interesting uh-huh. um so you uh i forgot when the boat models happen is that next so you go up you go back um nobody it's interesting because i i got the impression that people were kind of initially worried and then they were like oh she'll be fine go be fine Mm -hmm. um but then akaji is still like no i'm kind of worried but can't really do anything so goes back to working and is there's an interesting aspect to this where akaji is uh feeling quite burnt out i think um yeah and so you know feeling like she needs to fix everything for everyone and struggling with that um Mm -hmm. but at some point is introduced by some why did i not write this down is introduced by someone and i can't remember who is into building boat model models of boats it's lidio right the the pirate yes Mm -hmm. um and then starts building them and that's where most of your choice is in there are a few in terms of what you say to people and you know that affects your relationship with them i have just found out by looking at the achievement um Mm -hmm. And changes what the ending is, which is interesting because I didn't realize there were multiple endings to this part of the story, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, mm-hmm. And so you choose which type of boat to build and then you choose what color to make it and whether to put anything else on it. The interesting thing is you only can choose each color once. So if you choose the wrong color at the beginning, you can't then use that for something later on. Yep. Um, and, uh, I don't know if they like do a very good job of kind of telling no. you that. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. Know, until... Until you get to the last like point and you only have one color left, it's like oh. <laughs> I th- yeah, I think I noticed after the second one because then the next one came up and there were only like three colors and I was like, yeah, there were definitely more colors before. Um, I see. I just assumed because I didn't like go through the different like models. I just assumed that they were model based. Oh right, uh, so you could only use certain colors for certain models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I, I I think so. It wasn't until the end. That I think I, that, I think this is designed um, kind of in a way to make you play through it multiple times, um, which kind of mm-hmm. makes it more annoying that you can't have multiple save files. Um, yeah. But I suspect that's kind of an excuse for a lot of things like that, where it's like, well, you just gotta you just gotta try it again, you know. Um, mm-hmm. It's certainly one of the. You cannot get all the achievements without playing this game multiple times because. There are three different endings and three different achievements yep. for the three different endings. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Which I, I did start a second playthrough. Uh, so that's why I know that some things change. Uh, yeah. If, depending on the choices you make. Like, it's nothing major, I would say, but there were definitely some scenes that I think you could either avoid or just didn't happen because of yeah. a route you decided to take. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that like that's kind of nice. Like it's it's at least as of right now with chapter one, like it takes about an hour, maybe a little bit over an hour. So it's like kind of like a nice uh, break or a, a nice little like chill game if you wanted to. Yeah. To try it again later. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you you're building some models. You make one for Litio, and then. Mm-hmm. And then, is that when they find Napopo washed up on the shore? Uh, I think it's after you give uh, Bram's uncle model. Okay, Bram's. right. Yeah, there's lots of little bits of story around there. But kind of the main, mm-hmm. next main bit is that Napopo washes up on the shore. And that's obviously yeah. worrying because Napopo is normally with Koa. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you take Napopo home and Blue comes to help. Um, and... Napopo tries to tell you something and then it kind of keeps going and you're basically trying and figure out what's happening. You're kind of trying to find out what, what Napopo is trying to tell you and what that might mean for Koa. Um, and then you kind of try and you're trying to get pe- to find out information. But basically you go around everyone and you get to the end and you've got no extra information. Uh <laughs> <laughs> because like everyone's like oh maybe so-and-so knows something and they don't know something but maybe so-and-so knows something mm-hmm. but they don't know something oh but so-and-so's got a book but the book sells you nothing <laughs> yep. you literally that, get no what... information uh-huh. but uh, okay so in, in that scene when you're trying to like revive her i do like that, that there is some lore that you learn about napapo like at least what type of creature she is well uh, vaguely vaguely but it's more than what we had before okay sure sure i think uh-huh and that they're kind <laughs> of 
I think tied there's like history with that race and like another one yeah. of the races that was a huge component of summer summon Mara's plot. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's interesting because you do you do kind of feel like you're getting to know everybody a little bit better. Um mm-hmm. and that's good and interesting. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, it's uh it does feel a little bit like you're going round in circles to then get nothing. And then at the end, uh Latio comes back and says, We're gonna go find Koa. And depending on which ending you get, either everybody's there or nobody's there to help you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I definitely need to redo it so I can yeah. see these different endings. Yeah, yeah, me too. I uh, I got the mm-hmm. apparently I got the middle one, um, where people oh, nice. come people come to help you, but they're maybe not the most excited for it. Mm-hmm. I I got the I got everyone, so I somehow managed to do that right. I say somehow when I knowingly looked up a guide and <laughs> 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 and, and 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 did it uh, with uh, what they call the good ending. Uh, I'm currently doing a bad ending <laughs> or trying to do a bad route. So I'm excited to see what yeah. happens with that. Uh huh. Yeah. Just making everyone upset with me. Of course. It's I'm really sure great. I I'm sure I can do that one without a guide. Um Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know how to annoy people. Um uh-huh. I think I ended up doing the kind of middling one because it's like I'm nice to most people, but I didn't really want to listen to Noho's stories. Um <laughs> It was so satisfying on the bad ending version to just be like, I'm skipping this part. And <laughs> I actually feel kind of bad because the first one through, I was meant to, to be the good ending, and I accidentally cut Bram off like early because I thought I didn't realize that, that was a dismissal that the first selection was. So I was like, "Oh, sorry, Bram, because <laughs> I'm not helping you this time." Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's I think it's interesting because like the know-who stuff was like you're trying, you're you're. I get why you're kind of frustrated there because you're like, "Oh, I." need some information out of you and you're telling me about some random story that happened when you were a teenager right why are mm-hmm. you telling me this pointless story when our friend is missing <laughs> yep yep so i yeah definitely understand that reaction yeah. although i did enjoy the story as well i also yeah i also think it was it was kind of interesting because like noho although was trying to tell you stories was basically like i'm sure koa is fine he he has a lot of faith in Koa, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of kind of cute. He's like, he, mm-hmm. it's not that he doesn't care about Koa; it's that he's not worried because he doesn't think she's going to get in trouble, mm-hmm. which Despite is interesting. Not remembering her. Well, yeah, I think he was being a bit of a troll <laughs> there, actually. So, he like, was. he kind of tries was. to imply, he tries to say that he doesn't know who Koa is, but I'm convinced he's trolling. <laughs> uh huh. Also, I feel like uh, the previous game kind of implied Caleb's and Noho's relationship, but I think they kind of confirmed it in this one, and I was excited about that. Did you get that? I like... must have missed that bit. Okay. Uh, it was one of, I think, the second time he started doing stories again, so it might be right that one. Okay. I'll need okay. to, yeah, I definitely need to go and do the, the, the good and the bad ending and hear everything. Mm-hmm. There's also another uh, relationship that was kind of implied, uh, which I won't spoil because I don't think you went far enough or along the good route to, oh, no. to kind of see. I also, I feel like there's a, t- there's a bit where you talk to Regatta. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> was, she, was she asking me out on a date? I think she was asking me I out on a date. S- it kind of seems, I mean, what else would you want? dinner yeah like exactly the, i mean it might be that she just wants a meal like a free meal i just I'm, no i don't think so because like they didn't it wasn't worded in that way it wasn't worded like wasn't. give me food it was worded in a take me out for food kind of way uh-huh but i also thought there was like a lidio like romance line with akiji in the previous game so i'm very confused where <laughs> akiji's interest <laughs> lies now <laughs> i mean <laughs> I mean, why not both? <laughs> why not? I mean, yeah. I mean, who am I to say what Akiji actually wants? Or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, people can like very different people. Mm-hmm. 
am so excited to see if there is anything more with that i guess yeah <laughs> yeah so i don't yeah i think that's kind of the vague story overall i don't think we want to talk mm-hmm. too much about all of it because no. like there's obviously a lot more and there's some that i don't know about and there's presumably some yep. you haven't seen either um mm-hmm. but i think it's interesting um i'm intrigued as to where they're going i wonder whether we're going yep. to find koa in the next one or whether we won't find koa until the end of stories of mara we'll see uh, <laughs> i guess we will see my prediction will be that we don't find her until the end because it's i suspect like we've so. already we already know her story yes and obviously something new is happening yeah uh with her but i could see us learning more about the different other characters since it is stories of mara yeah even I don't know. Well, I guess we we will see. I I could I could see that maybe we find her in four, and mm-hmm. um and the fifth one is from Koa's point of view. I could also see that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't not bet on that either. I think <laughs> you wouldn't. If I could not make two bet bets on it, I would. I'm. But I don't like bets. If I could make two bets, I would make those two bets. <laughs> <laughs> That's very confusing. I don't actually know what you're saying here. I don't know either. <laughs> you wouldn't be surprised if it happened. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Cool. Fair enough. Um, is there anything else we want to talk about? Uh, I don't think so. I'm excited to see what they do next. Um, so overall, hoping we'll we'll get word of it soon. Overall, cute story, intriguing story, mm-hmm. uh, fun little visual novel. Um, a few quality of life improvements, please, GB. Yep. Not about fair summary. I think so. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Bev, for joining me to talk about stories of Mara. I look thank forward you. to talking about the rest with you in the future. Mm-hmm. Yes, me too. Because it's a nice, easy podcast to do. <laughs> it is. I was like, I, I realized on I think on Friday, it's like, oh, I haven't done any time in this game and then sat down and like did it's like oh this is only took an hour this is great (laughs) yeah it's like reading a picture book um uh Uh, thank you listeners for listening and uh for um, supporting the podcast in the ways that you do bev Mm -hmm. where can people find you on the internet i am pretty much everywhere at uh bev granger 711 uh b-e-v-g-r-a-n-g-e-r 711 not terribly active uh, like on Twitter or anything right now, but feel free to at me and maybe I will start being active again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to at you with no useful information in it every day on Twitter now. Beautiful. Perfect. I have a, an excuse to go on. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at the ScottBot, um, where I say stuff. I mean, I'm reasonably active, but most of it is just like retweeting nonsense. <laughs> Um, you can follow the podcast on Twitter, um, which is also mostly retweeting, but it's farming related stuff. So, you know, Mm -hmm. interesting, I would think, uh, you can find that at THS pod. Um, you can email us from our website, harvestseason.club, where you can also find links to everything else that we have, including our Patreon, if you so wish to support us that way. If you do, you get access to our limited edition uh greenhouse which is our patreon exclusive podcast and Mm -hmm. our next episode of that (laughs) we're talking about tennis yep and it takes some interesting turns and that is all i will Mm -hmm. say Mm -hmm. (laughs) so if you want to listen to some tennis and other related tangentially subjects (laughs) uh, tune into that in uh one week from when this podcast comes out you can access that mm-hmm. on Patreon. Um, yes. I think that's everything. Thank you all for listening again. Thank you, Bev, for joining me. Thank you. And until next time, have, have a good, good harvest. The Harvest Season is created by Rochelle Delaney and Al McKinley, with support from our pro farmer little patrons, Kevin and Stuart. Our art is done by Micah the Brave, and our music is done by Nick Burgess. Feel free to visit our website, harvestseason.club, for show notes and links to things we discussed in this episode. Thanks for listening!
time. I think the last time I was on, I was doing a lot of juggling. Like actual, like juggling with balls. No, no, I meant juggling with games. Like I was playing oh. I think, five different games at the same time. <laughs> I was so confused. I was like, I don't remember talking about juggling. I didn't realize you were a juggler. I uh, juggle. Spoiler, I am juggling right this minute as we talk. This is how talented I am. I can juggle and record. Um. <laughs> I like to juggle. It's fun. I don't have any balls around me just now, though. I can only well, juggle I do, with two. I do have three fidget spinners. Should I juggle with fidget spinners? <gasps> Try it and don't All right. break them. Let's see how it goes. Oh, dear. Uh, I mean, I managed that a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> Although there's no proof, because I'm not recording video. No, I heard the clatter, and that was about it. <laughs> I, got, I got a decent amount there that time. Very good. There we go. Very what good. great podcast content. Juggling with fidget spinners. <laughs> <laughs> the real fun would be, like, spinning them and then throwing it up and trying to catch it and keep it spinning. Ooh, yes. Goals. Goals. Now, now, next time you record, you have to like provide proof Ow. of. Oh no, of of your. That was treatment. painful. Okay, don't okay, don't, let's not don't juggle with spinning fidget spinners. <laughs> oh dear.